Material development and innovation, precast concrete. Structural design innovation, precast concrete, is awarded to the Hodder Avenue underpass in Thunder Bay. Would the following team members please come forward? Ministry of Transportation of Ontario, Northwest Region, Hatch, Mott, and McDonald, Terra North Construction and Engineering Limited, Lafarge. Due to the remote location and harsh environment of the project in northwestern Ontario, the owner's priorities were enhanced quality and durability of the final structure and a speedy execution of the construction work. Equally important for the owner was the aesthetics of the design. The Hodder Avenue underpass is a leading edge project utilizing an advanced modular construction approach made possible by the extensive use of UHPC. The innovative design and construction method taking advantage of the superior properties of UHPC effectively achieved the owner's requirement for enhanced quality, durability, and aesthetics. The result is a resilient and elegant bridge structure that is built to last. Would a representative of the winning team please come forward? Evening. Morning. Um, you know, I'd like to, uh, it, it's kind of funny, everybody gets to the front and they start thanking everybody and, you know, I really want to start thanking my mom and dad for doing what they did really well, I guess. But, <laughs> I mean, in all, in all seriousness, just want to start by thanking the Ontario Concrete Awards for this, sorry, I had to break their room already, I mean, it was a pretty cold room so far. Um, I want to thank the uh, Concrete, uh, Ontario Concrete Awards for this prestigious industry recognition of these two awards. I mean, I, and I'm honored to be up here uh, speaking on behalf of the entire team. It means a lot to the entire team, and I really emphasize team. It was, it was, a, it was a true team effort from uh, the HMM engineering team through to the contracting team at Terra North through to the precasting team at Lafarge. But in particular, just wanted to thank Ray Chris Yunus and Gary Weiss from the MTO. They have been integrating innovation into the bridge replacements and rehabilitations over the last 10 years. When I started in the industry almost 20 years ago, yeah, Bob, but it was actually that long ago I started working, um, I was shocked at how little engineering was done on the projects. The approach many owners wanted to do was do what you did over there, but on that bridge and don't change anything. In reality, not much has really changed over the last 20 years, as most clients now see engineering services not much different than supplying pens and paper. Often projects are going to the lowest bidder. Little, little consideration for the true engineering expertise of, of the groups. Unfortunately, this procurement process has actually stifled innovation. When HMM was awarded this project, Gary and Ray insisted on taking an innovative and out-of-the-box uh, approach. This innovation resulted in a concrete bridge structure almost entirely prefabricated. The abutments, the piers, ballast walls, approach slabs, girders, sidewalks, um, and parapet walls were all made from precast concrete materials. As with many good designs, the concept started on the back of an envelope over a coffee. While the team wanted a prefabricated bridge, the challenge wasn't with the box girders. After all, those have been done in Northwest Region for the, over the last eight years. The challenge was in fitting all the components together to create a monolithic bridge structure. Starting with the precast abutment, we wanted to create an integral abutment structure, but the words precast and integral don't typically go together unless the word not is in there. However, once the foundation drilling had been completed, it was pretty clear that semi-integral configuration was preferred. Problem solved. The next challenge was how to incorporate the pier, the columns, and the cap. Through several iterations of concepts, a plan to follow a standard, a standard column pier cap design was completed and put into our 3D model. Upon presenting that solution to the MTO, it quickly became apparent from their reaction that this is not what they were envisioning and not what the site was deserving of this site. After all, this is Northwest Region's first grade separated interchange and the closest bridge to the Terry Fox Monument just outside Thunder Bay. I'm sure we'd all agree that Terry Fox is more deserving of something unique and extraordinary. The result of our team's workshop was to design the cap as an innovative or as an inverted T and connect it into the ends of the girders, minimizing the caps protruding below the girders. After running several computer models, the only material we could use was a precast, pre-stress, ultra-high performance concrete. 
The inverted T had a corbel detail that historically we shied away from. The use of ultra high performance concrete, in this case it was Lafarge's ductile on the project, allowed the design to keep the structure thin and sleek, but strong enough to carry the loads. We had previously used ductile and other assignments as the material that connects the precast elements together due to its, its superior compressive tensile strengths, but also due to its durability. We believe this is the first use of an inverted T ultra high performance concrete in this type of an application. The bridge itself is a two span bridge over 60 meters long, built from side by side precast pre stressed concrete box girders, made continuous over the pier for live load. Again, the material used for, the connect, for this connection was ductile, but primary reason was for its tensile strengths. Uh, the, the boxes are connected to each other using ductile as well, which is a typical detail that we use in the Northwest region. This eliminates the need for a topping slab or a deck to distribute the loads. The next key area was the use of prefabricated concrete sidewalks and parapet walls. By using precast elements, we were able to eliminate all the, forward, all the formwork on the overhang, which ultimately enhanced safety for the on-site workers so they didn't have to work over top of live traffic. On top of the parapet wall, we, we pl then placed a unique railing that you can see from the photos in the slide presentation. To be honest, this railing was from a photo that somebody had seen in Minnesota, so we do have to give the credit to uh, MN Dot. All of us who worked on this project are also delighted that the bridge also received awards from PCI. Uh, the, the, we received two down there, the most honorable being the Harry H. Edwards Award, which is actually for recognition, very similar to tonight, for innovation and advancement of the industry. The judges said that this structure was chosen for its cutting edge and innovative solution to a typical freeway bridge. They said that it can be used as the cornerstone for the future of rapid bridge replacements for across North America and assist with the large backlog of deficient structures in the system. This solution can easily be adapted and engineered to a wide variety of, of, of situations and it's almost bridge out of a box. Just simply customize the bridge for the site, fabricate it and then assemble on site. In retrospect, it's actually quite ironic that our team was challenged to think outside of the box and what we end up developing in the end was a bridge out of the box solution that we can use in our entire industry. Thank you.